Welcome to the Coaches Chat. I'm John Serenitas, and this week I'm joined by Dale and Dana Olson from Milford High School. Coaches, how are you tonight? Doing well, man. Doing well. Yep. Appreciate you having us. Well, I want to say thank you guys for taking the time. Uh, obviously, uh, it's a busy time of year. We were talking before we went live about how it's camp season, and and there really is no off season in football anymore, is there? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Especially my brother and I, it's uh, maybe Christmas off and New Year's, but other than that, it's football, football, football. You're not really off, though. You're watching bowl week. Who's getting who? <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, I'm usually texting, uh, talking to college coaches and wishing them a Merry Christmas and all that on uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, too. So, yeah, it never ends. No, and I'm sure you're sitting there with, with the, you know, the old school notepad and the pencil. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. I'll take that, you know. Um, well, obviously, you guys are at Milford High School now, and you have a storied past together. Talk a little bit about what it's meant to you guys to coach together. You have coached together for a long time. Tell our viewers a little bit of, of the backstory of, of the Olsen brothers and your coaching careers, both individually and together. Go ahead, Dana. Go ahead, Dana. You can go first. Oh, I'll go first. Um, yeah, I did I did one year of uh, junior college. I went Juco and uh, played basketball, believe it or not. Um and after uh, that first year, uh, I got into – Paul Carroll called me, you know, and uh, he's the head coach at Medway, 19 years old. He uh, offered me a job, and I was just like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. I come from – we come from a coaching family. My dad was a, a basketball coach was also a high school basketball official. And believe it or not, actually uh, – left Millis High School and, and actually went down to U Miami to try and play football down at U Miami back during the Jim Auto day. Um, wow. For any of the older listeners. <laughs> you know? uh, so I started coaching. Double zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I started coaching at 19 with Dale. Dale came along with me, and Dale actually played Juco college football when I was playing Juco basketball. And the rest is history. I was an OC at 20. At Medway High School, I mean, I remember my first football experience as a coach was at a football camp right before the high school season started, you know, and got introduced to General Lee and Tom Lamb and uh, Bay State football camp. Uh, yeah, the rest is history, 25, 26, 27 years, whatever it's been now since uh, we started doing this. But it's 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 been a great run and, uh, you know, Times have changed, obviously, Coach. I think we're I think we're the same age, forty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We're all in the same uh, same yeah. age group. Well, I, I remember the VHS tapes and actually watching the old reels. When I took over at Millis, they still had the reels, so I was looking at wow. the reels um, and watching some phenomenal football players back in that eighty Super Bowl team from Millis. Uh, you know, running back off to ten D and. Uh, you know, and uh, VHS tapes, you know, and then DVDs, you know, and now we're into this technology. We just got the huddle remote, and <laughs> I don't even know how to use this freaking thing. <laughs> you know, thank God. I'm with you, brother. <laughs> it, it's it's crazy, you know, they got the sideline thing, you know, now you, you know, and I'm like, who the hell has time to look at a play on a sideline? Right? I'm worried about so much other stuff, you know, and uh but, we, you know, we, we have a passion for it, I guess, or a sickness, as my wife likes to call it sometimes. And, uh, you know, right before I got on, I mean, I have the laptop right here, and, and I was watching, you know, some drills, you know, and you're always stealing, right? If you're not stealing, yeah. then you're not learning. Uh, you know, and him and I just, we kind of just took off and ran with it and, and had a passion for it, and we thought that Massachusetts was super under-recruited. Not a lot of respect for the football that's played here. And, you know, we like to think behind the scenes about a little bit of a piece of, you know, helping kids in Massachusetts get recruited and bringing in some big time schools to, to, you know, it's a funny story. And I'll say it quick, you know, Bud Foster was in my office when I was the head coach at Millis. And Bud Foster said, the last time I was in Massachusetts, I think, is when we played BC. He goes, I've never recruited here before, you know. Yeah. Just give me 15 minutes on the whiteboard. Just 15 minutes, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> rain, you know, and, and you know, and uh, actually the following year is when Bud Bud retired, and uh, 
you know, so it's been it's it's been great great run so far. It uh, you know some days I'm tired, like probably you. You know, it, it's it, mm-hmm. it's a lot more work, you know, in off season than it ever was before. Because now, if you're not doing something in the off season, it's not recruiting, if it's not weightlifting, it's not speed training, it's not taking kids to camps to showcase, you're behind. You know, mm-hmm. so, uh, I'm starting to get a little tired, a little weary around the edge, but I still got a little lightning left, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you guys um, have you coached a part before? And if so, how many years have you coached a part? Yeah, so one year I was down in New Jersey, um, and I helped out with the high school team, Hill- Hillsborough, New Jersey. So I helped out with the high school team down there. But um, that was it. Yeah. That was it. So uh, yeah, like Dana said, like, I got my start with Paul Carroll too, and. I was coaching uh, the freshman team and the sub varsity team uh, as a 19 year old kid at Medway, and um, we all have the same experiences, right? Yeah, Our generation <laughs> of coaches. <laughs> yeah. So it, you know, and, it, and it's been a great ride. You know, like like Dana said, you know, getting our feet wet and learning from some of the best people I think in the business in the Bay State League. You know, back 26 years ago, and you know, with the Lees and the Lambs and, and you, you know, and um, I'm forgetting it and drawing a blank. The guy, the guy from St. Sebastian, who I used to always talk to. Oh, yeah. Over at, uh, yeah. yeah who, who just retired. And yeah. um, you know, I got to, it came full circle because, you know, I, I helped quite a bit when Louis Hansen, the kid from St. Sebastian, and I helped him in his recruiting process as did Dana and uh, got to know the family real well. So, you know, I caught a couple games and uh, got to meet back up with coach Souza, who's a great man. But uh, yeah, it's just you know, like Dana said, it's it's a grind, but it's it's a sickness, and it's a good sickness for guys like us, you know, and you, and and uh, it's just it's a lot of time and effort, but it's gratifying when you you know, like as you know, we 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 played each other this year, uh, mm-hmm. my first year in Milford with Dana, and we, we sent ten kids off. You know, one kid could have went off, but he's going to do a prep year and uh, to college to play college football and. We've been coaching a long time. We've never sent 10 kids off to play, you know, at any level of college football all at once. And, um, you know, it, it was great to see. And, uh, you know, it was great to get back with Dana. And he laughs at me all, all the time now. So, you know, I, I get all the stress of being a head coach, which he went through for four years. And uh, I definitely know what he, what he was talking about, you know. <laughs> so it's, yeah, uh, it's a, you know. A friend of mine said to me when I took over at Norwood, he said, you will never be the same. And he wasn't wrong. It yeah. definitely changes you during the during the experience, but in some ways even after the experience because it changes your perception of the game and the way you look at the game. And I say that because I think it helped me become a better coach yeah. once I left that role and went back to being a coordinator and an assistant. You, you, you definitely have a different view of the game. Now, a lot of your experience coaching together is in the Tri-Valley League. Talk a little bit about how long were you guys in the Tri-Valley, and then talk about obviously being together at Millis. You guys won back-to-back Super Bowls. Talk about that experience a little bit, being in the Tri-Valley and then being together at Millis and winning two state titles. Yeah, so sure. So like like I said, we started in the Tri-Valley, and I, you know it's been so many years now, but I think we were at Medway meet five or six. Dana could correct me if I'm wrong, but – um. And then uh, they replaced the staff there, and Dale Caparasso was the head guy over at Bellingham and called Dana and I up and asked us to come over and help there. And, um, you know, listen, we learned a lot from from that wild man um, and, um, you know, and uh, had a lot of success there in the nine years we were there, you know, with Ricky Santos and some of those um, teams we had there. And um, I think after that, we, we left the Tri-Valley for a little bit. Um, and, you know, in coach in Framingham and that, you know, that's and then came back to Millis. So that's kind of how it went. But most of our time, yeah, was spent in the Tri-Valley and uh, league we played, you know, grew up and played in. You know, our, my dad played in, my mom played in, um, my my wife played in. And uh, it was uh, it was a great experience. I know Dana could probably add a little more to that. So, yeah, it, I, I think, you know, I think the Tri-Valley for a lot of years, you know, people kind of who food us a little bit as far as the level of football. And uh, I, I thought the Tri Valley kind of came full circle and, and I coached dates and stuff like that. But I, I remember 
you know, when they started this crazy playoff thing, and, and next thing you know, I'm watching Medfield beat North Attleboro in a, in a, in a first-round playoff game, and I'm like, hold yeah. on. <laughs> hold on a sec. You know, and obviously, Todd Kiley's had a ton of success, um, won a lot of Super Bowls, and, uh, you know, he sent some kids off to play college football. And, uh, you know, the Tri-Valley's a good brand of football. I, I would say it was eye-opening when – Dale and I went, Gary Doherty called us and was like, hey, let's come on over. You guys are running that spread thing. And, you know, and, and the way the whole spread thing, it's a funny, quick story, Coach. I'm, I'm watching this video last night because it's got like, tight end and, and trips, RPO game. I'm like, yeah, I'm on it. I'm going to watch this. And it was a young coach, and, and he starts explaining it. And I'm like, I hit pause, and I my wife. I go, Dale and I saw – we learned this from Chip Kelly 12 years ago. <laughs> Watch this. This is Duma. We run it, <laughs> you know. And, right. And Chip got it from Urban, you know, when Urban went, you know, to, to Florida and was running it with uh, good, yeah. Good, yeah. Chris Leak and, uh, you know, and it, 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 everything comes full circle. You know, I had a great time coaching the Tri-Valley. I to go back to my dad's alma mater, a couple Super Bowls, and, let, let's face it. I mean, I took over a team for Dale Olmstead that was was on the rise. You know, Dale did a great job, and, and, and you know, he's doing a great job at Nichols, and he's got one of our running backs there that might have a shot at playing in the NFL, uh, JJ, that played for me and Dale. And uh, you know, I there was talent there. It's just our numbers were so small. In 017, when we won the Super Bowl, we dressed 25 kids, but the 11 wow. field could play. Um, I want to say we sent six or seven kids D1 out of there, you know, out of Millis, you know, and at the time people were like, what's going on, you know, and it's like, and, and I always say years and years, and you, you know, a lot of coach do, it's just networking mm -hmm. and network. You got to give them a product that they're going to like, and then they trust you. They trust you for a long time. Pick up the phone. And say, hey. This kid doesn't play for me, but I've watched the tape and I've watched the live. You gotta go, you gotta go see this kid. And uh just twenty-five plus years of networking, we can make those phone calls now for kids, um, including our own. Um, and these coaches will pick up and they'll listen. Um, but it took a long time for that to happen. And like when I'd call and say, Hey, get over at Holliston, they'd be like, Holliston, what where? You know, and uh, I remember sending Bud Foster down to Holliston High School, and he goes, well, how far is that? What county is that in? I go, coach, is five minutes down the road. Five minutes down the road. <laughs> what <laughs> county is that in? <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's been a fun ride. Uh, Eye-opening coaching in the Bay State. I mean, our first game coaching with Gary Doherty in the Bay State was against Walpole, a little running back called Ryan Izzo. And I'm like, I'm watching the kid tape going, well, what? What is this? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we had Danny Guanoli, had a great yeah. career. Terrific quarterback. Oh, yeah. dear. I'm telling you right now, I, I tell people all the time, probably one of the best quarterbacks I've ever coached. Full circle. Cerebral, how it's a for an arm, old school mentality. And I've coached some really good quarterbacks. And, He's probably the best one I've coached, and I tell Ricky Sanders that all the time. You know, uh, and, and I'm sure he loves hearing that. <laughs> we, the, the Sanders family and Olson family, go way back, way back. You, so you can bust his chops. You have you have I, license to bust his chops. Yeah, his grandfather and my dad were really good friends, both Millis guys, and I remember seeing Ricky in diapers. Right, so the family, you know, so we've known Ricky a long, long time. Great guy. Yeah, Great. we. Experiences. Bay State was certainly eye opening. Um, I so was the Hawk this year, coach. So oh, was the Hawk. <laughs> well, the, I will say, you know, you say you you bring that up. Yeah, the Hawk is, I think, just another level. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Bay State in those years. Yes. Um, but but I think with the Hawk, what makes it so unique is is that it's one of the few leagues left in the state now where these are all border rivals. You know, and so it seems like every week you're playing someone else that in theory is a rival because of proximity. But the other thing that's great about the Hawk, and you guys saw it this year, is, is when you do get to the playoffs and when we do get to that point in the fall, when you do get to the playoffs, you will be battle-tested. 
because you've gone through that gauntlet. It helped us a lot in 16 and 17. Sure. It came people when we went back to back that we yeah. we had to beat Mansfield. We had to beat North and Foxborough. And so that sets you up to be able to compete against other schools because sure. you are battle tested. You guys have talked a lot about camps and I do want to come back to Milford and, and the Hawk, but you've talked a lot about camps and recruiting. And obviously you guys have done a lot to help not only kids that you've coached, but a lot of kids locally. I'm going to ask you the most basic question here. How important is it for a high school head coach or high school coaches period to be involved in the recruiting process? Because as you guys know, and you've been in the business a long time, for a long time, it used to be this mentality that you, you just coached from August to November, and that was it. It's a different ballgame now. How important is it for head coaches and assistant coaches alike to be involved in that process now? I, I think it's huge, um, and you'll hear it from college coaches all the time. The number one person that needs to advocate for that kid that's going to end up helping that kid is his head coach and his assistant coaches. Um and Dana and I kind of got involved in the whole recruiting thing with kids around the state. And God, now it's like, you know, we, I helped a kid from Texas this year that was a friend of a friend. And um, his parents and kids, they're, they're spending all this money. When it comes down to it, you really don't need to spend all that money if you have the right guy in place that's leading your program, that's going to advocate on your behalf and take the time to do it. And as we know, it's it's time, right? Um that's your number. That's your, that's your best get right there. And uh, mm -hmm. Dana and I got involved because we were just we wanted to help kids, and we wanted to especially help Massachusetts kids. You know, at the start, and um, we didn't want families paying thousands and thousands of dollars for it when all it takes is someone to advocate, right? And you know, and that's what we did. We started advocating for kids. Now we just didn't, you know, free nilly willy start advocating for kids like. We helped kids that we knew, you know, first we wanted to see transcripts and, um, you know, and my brother, and I never take a dime for any of this stuff, but you, you got to be in good standing. You got to be a great kid in your school and in your community. And, um, you know, Dana could tell you a um, funny story about Will Levis, who was the Penn State quarterback um, driving up from Connecticut and Dana and I personally working him out and starting to help him through the process. Right. And uh, he had some some offers going, but nothing that he really perked his interest. And so we, you know, Dana did a few things mechanically to his throwing motion. Um, but it was more just teaching him how to navigate the whole college recruiting thing. And next thing you know, you know, Will's got offered by Penn state and Iowa and Florida and all, you know, all these schools started offering them. It was just a little tweaking mostly on my brother Dana's part. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why we do it. It's, uh, we're passionate about great kids getting great opportunities. And if we got to kick a few doors down to help these kids, we will. Yeah. And, and the game has really changed a lot in that regard, right? Like, again, it used to be that there, there were no combines for a long time. Yeah, there were camps, but, but there were very few coaches there. Now that, that scene has exploded between, especially this time of year now going into June and July, mm -hmm. but, but the, the, the camp combine scene, now you've got the, the league, John Pappas's creation, they played their first season. How important is it for for football players to to go to these combines, to go to these camps, to be exposed to these coaches? Because yeah, your coach can can make phone calls and send highlight films out and all that good stuff. But a lot of these young people have to advocate for themselves, correct? Yeah, I mean, I'll let Dana touch upon this. We, you know, <laughs> we yeah. we have an opinion on the matter, that's for sure. So go ahead, Dana. You know, I, I, and by the way, this is a full opinion zone, Coach, so <laughs> go for it. Say whatever you need to say, my friend. Get it off your chest. You know, there's some things I'll leave alone. Um, you know, number one, you know, as, as far as the camp goes, um, it, listen, parents, it's crazy. Parents will write checks, like just checks, you know. And, and you know, Dale and I, we don't laugh about it, but, like, we had a, we, we had a player that played for us, and I won't say what school. And his mom came in and said, I don't understand why he's not playing. He got invited to this camp and went out to Ohio. And they said he was great. I go, did you write a check? She goes, yeah. I go, a big one? She's like, yeah. I go, I tell you, kid, great too. <laughs> you, know, so like, you know, so navigating, you know, our biggest thing is we're always going to sit down with the, the, the family. 
have realistic expectations. Sometimes they don't like what we have to say. I mean, I talked to a, a, a kid from New Jersey probably two or three weeks ago that reached out through Twitter and he said, can you, can you watch my film? I know a lot of people and I watched his film and, and gave him an honest, honest answer. And he didn't like that. I said, well, that, that that's just my opinion, you know, but he's, you, you got to be strategic in the recruiting thing. Do you have to do all these combines and all these camps? I would say that it's really blowing up and a lot of people are seeing, and I'm a huge advocate, you know, of money grabs. Like I, 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 it drives me nuts. You're a capitalist. I got you. You know, it's just like, it's like, Hey, that guy's making money doing this. I'm going to do it. And then this person's going to do it. And then he's experts. And certainly I'm not an expert. I, 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 we've been doing it a long time. So we help that we guide them to what camps are good ones. You know, and, and have a short list. Like, I, I'm reading this Twitter stuff. And my wife thinks I'm crazy. And this kid, one of these kids that reached out to me, he's going to 14 camps. Wow. <laughs> 14 camps. You know, and, and it's just like, be realistic. Have a have a common goal. And, and yes, the kid has to advocate for himself. But my big thing, and, and we talk about it all the time, if we're not advocating for our kids, they're going to come and get because with this whole social media thing, and Dale and I just went through this at Milford, he hadn't even coached it down in football, and four of our kids are trying to get pillaged by prep schools in Connecticut. Wow. Promising yeah, that. And, that, and I'm glad you brought that up, Dana, because I'm, that, that really is an issue, and it has been an issue in recent years. You know, for a long time it was you had to worry about the Catholic schools. But now they're not they're not who you have to worry about. It is no. the private schools. And if you're a public school coach, how do you how do you protect against that? Because it, it is hard to do, especially if you're dealing with, with a young man and a family that has the means to send their son to a private school. Sure. It's 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 all product, right? It's like how you're gonna run a great program and convincing the kids like I'll Dana and I'll never, you know, tell a kid, hey, you know, if you, you, if you think the grass is greener and, you know, you're going to get a better education, a better shot athletically, by all means. So, you know, when we got to Milford and, you know, I lost a few kids to the ISL right away, um, you know, a few in Connecticut, I think, or one in Connecticut and one in the ISL up here. And, you know, it's uh, I just I just met with them and just said, hey, that's fine. I shook their hand. And um, but I think by setting a good culture, you know, at a KP like you guys have done there and we're trying to do at Milford and North Attleboro and Fox Road, you, you know, the kids will stay, you know, if, if, if things are running the way they should be running. And, you know, and like I said to Dana is like in Dana, you know, we did this at Millis. If the kids generally know you care, right. You care about them, not just on the football field, off the football field, and you build that relationship, then they'll stay. But it's like the wild, wild west out there um, in the prep and private school offering these kids and telling these kids they're going to do this and that for them, which could happen, could happen. Um, but, you know, then again, it's like some of these kids, some of the elite kids really aren't paying much of anything to go to these private schools. Right. So it's, yeah. uh, it, right. it, you know, and like I said, the Dana, Dana and I have the same belief on that. It's like uh, we'll coach the kids that want to be coached and want to stay home and um you know we'll talk about you know what we're trying to do and what we're trying what we're trying to be all about and uh hopefully that's enough that the kid will stay right and uh it's a, it's in the one thing and like i know i can say it on here with you is like them them reaching out right the the, the private schools they're reaching out to kids through twitter and social media it's like you know we're if Coach Saranese ever reached out to a kid through Twitter trying to get him to KP, or Coach Olson's did it to Milford, oh yeah, we'd be. That, that, that's not we're, we're done. We're not coaching anymore, right? right. But it's, it is. Yeah. There's no rules. There's no regulations, which is fine. That's that's their league, you know. But there's like there is no filter there, you know. And then they get their student football players on their teams at these private schools to reach out to the kids, and that's it. That's their that's their job. That's what they're getting paid to do is to get kids to come come there our job is mm -hmm. to keep our kids right so right. that's what that's yeah. what we're trying to do now milford obviously you guys 
just finished your first season there during this fall two season. Talk a little bit about the process. What appealed to you about Milford? Why Milford? Growing up close to town, right? Um, and as Dana can attest to, and my dad would take us over and see, you know, some of those great teams in, in the late 70s and early 80s over in Milford and, you know, the Pine family and, you know, and hearing stories about, you know, Howie Long and my dad watching him play and Pat Cornelius. Um, you know, it was just Milford was a top premier program for a long time under, you know, Dennis Breen and John Dagnese and Waxy Cullen. Like they did great things on the football field and produced great, great young men. And, um, you know, being there a couple of years ago, um, my brother and I, for the year we were there a couple of years ago, we could see that it was there, just some tweaking, right? It was, uh, you know, holding the kids accountable and changing the culture a little bit and bringing back that, you know, that toughness that Milford was always known for back in the days. And, you know, we're in the process of trying to build that now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with that. I mean, when he, he called me. One, I told him, I'm like, you're nuts. You, have you not listened to a word I said? You don't want to be a head coach. You know, I'll take, I used to say to him all the time when he'd be like, hey, you, why are they doing this? And why won't they let us do that when I was the head coach of Millis? And I would go from the departed, heavy is the crown, right? <laughs> heavy is the crown, you know? And, um, but he's just like, hey, I, I really think we can make an impact there. Um, you know, like every town that you have your, your politics and everything else. And, you know, you got to weave through all that kind of stuff and what have you. But at the end of the day, you know, there are people in this state that can't stand us and that's OK. You know, and there's people in this state that are like, hey, those guys will do anything for anybody. And, and that's OK. You know, I, I you know, we, we say all the time, listen, we didn't get into this to make friends. We got into this to make to, to help kids and mold and mold futures. And um Sometimes you're going to step over people or, or, or piss people off on the way. And I'm okay with that, you know, but, I, you know, I like being there in 018 and, you know, seeing what the Hawk was all about, you know, I would say, and I would, I, and I'll go to my friend this, and we've coached in some great leagues, coached in the base state, the physicality in the Hawk, there isn't another, I, I, yeah, there isn't another league. Now there's good out there and there's great players and everything else top to bottom physicality in the hawk we can freak out i'm going we're in for another bloodbath you know and we, yeah. oh yeah it, listen if, if we can't stop off tackle with six we're in big trouble you know i'd like to try and stop off tackle with five in the box but we're gonna need six or seven there's a lot more big man surfaces in in, in the hawk where we saw more multiple tight ends and three tight ends and we're used to you know we're facing a lot of spread stuff but i just i just thought milford was just on the edge of being able to do something you know and i think we took a really small baby step this this year in this whatever season you want to call it um you know and being able to play kp and mansfield those teams and for those kids to actually be like because it was a mentality almost a mentality and like he took over, we're going to the large, and, and immediately the kids are like, we can't play with KP, we can't play with Manfield. So it's like mindset and saying, guys, you've never done it, so let's try it. You know, trust us, you know, and, you know, you can't make that dog bite, right? You know, but you can do a lot of things change between the ears to really help them with the process of being like, hey, we belong here. Like, I was shocked that we hadn't beaten Franklin once in 30 years. years. I was like, what? Wait a minute. Once in 30 years, it was back in 16. And I remember going, because my cousin was a running back at Franklin. I remember going to those Milford games, and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, but it was it's so changing the mindset to be like, hey, we can play with these guys. You know, and, and now I think the kids are leaving. Now it's it's building the culture and the weight room and like, we didn't have a weight room. I know you guys didn't have a weight room last year. Like that's what right. we that's what we that's where you build your foundation. Weight room, you know. So final question here, guys. How 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 cool was it to get to coach your nephew Brady Olson? I, I'm sure for you, Dana, you coached him at Bishop Fiend, and you guys got a chance to coach him this year at Milford. Talk a little bit about that experience, getting to coach him 
it, at, not only in Milford, but really you guys have been involved in terms of coaching him for a long time. But talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Brady had no choice, you know, and uh, in diapers, you know, he was, you know, having the ball up there and, you know, three-step drop. And we knew we knew we, we were going to – his dad played quarterback in high school and as did Dana, and we knew we were going to – have at least one quarterback in the family at some point in time, right? And uh, it was fantastic. You know, Brady's a phenomenal young man, um, great kid. Um, he's he's good in all phases of life right now, and that's that's great to see. And for Dana and I to uh, be able to coach him in his final final year, and uh, you know, it, no one's tougher, you know, on him than us. And uh, you know how that is with family. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially if you coach family and uh, we were tough on him, you know, but we, we know as he goes up the levels, you know, and he's at UMass, it's going to get even tougher. Right. So, he, he, you know, he handled it well and, uh, you know, it was a pleasure to coach him. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing him graduate and he made some great lifelong friends at Milford, two of them. You know, one of them is going to be his roommate, um, Carter Scudo up at UMass and Dom Schofield and uh you know, it was just a pleasure. Fantastic uh, to see him off in his final year, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Dan, get some thoughts on Brady from you. Listen, uh, you know, I could have killed him on numerous occasions. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I think that's one thing that, that's different. You're not different, you know. By the I, way, Walt Bell is glad you didn't. But anyway, <laughs> <continue>. yeah. so, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, people don't realize that Brady hasn't been playing football that long. And he, you know, he's a 160 pound kid at Bishop Fiend at six feet tall. And, you know, and I'm listen, you get hit, you matter. So you got to get rid of the football. And, you know, just to be able to like really physically coach him. And I mean, he's, he's rock. I mean, you saw tape on him. He's rock. This thing's talented. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's good for him to go off because he had to play for me for another season. I probably would have buried him at the 50, uh, <laughs> but I love him to death. He's my nephew and he's a special kid, no doubt about it. And, you know, and, and I look at it and say his progression, because as much as we want to say we were involved a lot, coach, we were coaching. So we weren't around a lot, you know, I, you know, Christmas time or a Sunday and my brother Brian's just like, I don't know. I can't fix them. And, you know, I come over and spend a half an hour. With them. We were all over the place. We were coaching in Super Bowls. I got pictures of these up to my knee. You know, so we really only got around him, you know, at Fian for me. And then, and then this past little shortened season. But I think the best football is certainly ahead of him. Um, he's brought, you know, he finally has a little bit of whiskers on his chin. He doesn't look like a baby anymore. He's starting to fill out and, you know, and, and in the end, I'll leave you with this. Like, you know, a lot of people, like, you know, a lot of people said, hey, he got offers because of the people we know. You know, and the people that are saying that, just come and watch his work ethic. He earned it. He mm -hmm. earned it. Uh, and the, and the, I, listen, I didn't spread fairy dust on him to make him grow four inches in, in a year and a half, you know, and become six, three, six, four, and, you know, and, I think his best football is ahead of him. I love him to death. And now I get to back and yell at Walt Bell, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that, or, you know, and, and just support him. You know, he, he called me, you know, I'm still, I'm training him, up, you know, once a week. He's over with M2 Quarterback Academy, you know, and he's hungry. He just wants to get better. But, you know, funny story, he, I said, hey, how you doing with the UMass Playbook? And he goes, they got 27 formations. And I said, yeah, you better know what all of them are. <laughs> you know, uh, there it is. Love them to death. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys have done a phenomenal job, not just for the guys you've coached, but for kids across our region. And I think that you guys are, uh, you guys are positive for young men throughout the region. Not only the young men you coach, but the young men you come across that you help get recruited and you help through that process. Uh, Dale, Dana, I want to say thank you guys for taking the time tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's do this again soon. I'd love to have Brady on. We're launching our uh, new uh, live stream tonight, the recruiting visit. So 
I'll make sure I reach out to Brady to get him on. But uh, let's do this again soon, fellas. Absolutely. Coach, oh, Coach I appreciate it. I love, I love the platform you got here. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Well, thank you, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good All night. Right. Take it yeah, easy, take Coach. Take care. Well, that'll do it for this week's episode of the Coaches Chat. Join us again next week when we have another coach on. Now, stay tuned for our newest live stream, The Recruiting Visit. Owen McGowan from Catholic Memorial is our first guest, and that comes up next.